Hello everyone, in this uh, video I'm going to introduce you to a really great and, and I think fascinating uh, data source available through, um, through the web, uh, courtesy of New York City. Uh, it's New York City's Open Data, and this is a catalog of all sorts of um, city service data and information on the city uh, that's available uh, free of charge uh, for you to download. So. Um, as many of you know, one of the most difficult things when working in, in GIS is, is finding good quality data to start with, and, and I think this is a fantastic resource. So, um, part of this video is going to talk a bit about, um, you know, or at least talk about one of the data sets on New York City Open Data, uh, and then the other part is, is really going to talk about Google Fusion Tables. Um, if it's not something you're familiar with, uh, this should be a, a good, very quick, brief introduction to it. And then, of course, from there, you can kind of go and explore on your own. Um, so starting here, um, in New York City Open Data, you can just do a web search uh, for it. You'll get to this page. And uh, scrolling down here, you'll see all sorts of really great data sets. Um, you can search and browse um, the data sets yourself. One of the most interesting, however, should pop up right here on the front page. And that's 311 service requests. For those of you that don't know, 311 is like 911, except for non-emergency services. So you get all sorts of really cool stuff you can get. Um, you know, pretty much, um, you know, anytime somebody notes, say, a pothole or graffiti or uh, maybe a, a noise complaint, um, a rat sighting, I mean, it, it's really a great data set. Um, you can get it all right here. It's updated daily uh, and you can query it out and, and really do a lot of really cool stuff. So I, that, that's kind of what we're going to do today. Um, you certainly don't have to follow the example that I'm going to use. Um, there's some really great queries that other uh, users have uh, started with, but the one that um, I went ahead and uh, built that you can use or you can set up yourself is um, something I called Superstorm Sandy Streetlight Condition. So once you click on the 311 um, data itself, you'll get a page very similar to this. Uh, and basically up here you'll have a bunch of tools. Uh, you can manage the data. Um, this button right here, this More Views, will let you view queries like this one that other people have already run on the data. And to save a query, you just simply need to create a very uh, um, uh, a quick account. It, it takes you no more than a couple of seconds. And they don't ask for much other than a password and an email. Um, from there, you can visualize and filter and export the data. So it's, it's great. Um, I'm actually not going to go into the visualization tools here. However, um, you don't actually have to do this next step that I'm going to do. We're actually going to download one of these data sets and view it in um, Google Fusion Tables. But you know, if you'd rather just work within the site, you can do that. Um, it, it's nice. You can also embed you know, your final data visualization in, say, a web page. Um, but starting here, um, just to kind of give you a taste for the 311 data itself, all the data essentially as these requests come in is geocoded. So you'll note right here, I'm, I'm really querying out a specific um, subset of the data. I'm really only looking um, over here under the filters. I'm, I'm really only looking for data between 1030 2012 and 1103 uh, 2012. Um, and, and specifically, I'm only looking for a street light condition complaints. So these are calls that came into the system that are talking about things like, you know, there's a street light out on my corner, or there's a lamppost, the storm's knocked down, those sorts of things. Um, and if that query isn't there, you'll see all the rest of the, the data. Um, keep in mind, this is a very, very large data set. So depending on the query you run, it can take a while for the system to return results. Um, but then the really great thing about this data set that you'll notice here at the end is that it has already been geocoded. It gives you both street um, state, I'm sorry, state plane coordinates. It also gives you the longitude and latitude. Uh, and oftentimes it'll give you a street address. And if not the street address, you can usually um, determine the nearest intersection. Uh, so something like street lights, for example, won't have a specific street address often associated with it, but it will have a, an intersection if you prefer to use that. Once you get your data set, you can simply click on this export button. Um, what that's going to do is that's going to open up another window here. Um, you can actually hit the data directly here um, via a, an API, but what I'm going to do or what I've already done is, is simply downloaded the data and um, the format that seems to obviously work well is just an Excel uh, spreadsheet format. So once you've got that downloaded, um, one thing you may want to do is you may want to clean out some of these blank columns. Um, you can either do it here uh, through this menu option 
where you simply hide the column and it'll kind of take it out of this list. Or you can go back into Excel and just kind of strip them out. Um, you know, with all data sets, the, the more you do that, just the, the more seamless things seem to work. Um, in this case, um, now if you're not familiar with Google Fusion Tables, Google Fusion Tables is an option under Google Drive, which is uh, obviously a cloud-based service that allows you to store um, stuff within Google Drive. All right, so once you go to Google Drive and you click on that big red Create button on the left-hand side, you'll see an option, or you should see an option under there to create a Fusion Table. Uh, once you do that, you'll get to this screen, and this screen will let you navigate to wherever you save that downloaded data and load it all in, in and click Next. Uh, when you get to the screen, obviously it's a good idea to attribute the data as appropriate. Okay, so once we get that data loaded into Google Fusion Tables, we should be looking at something like this. Uh, and, and that's really all there is to it. It's, it's very easy to get the data in and start working with it. Um, now, if your view doesn't look quite like this, you're probably still in the classic view, uh, which will look like this. Um, either, either one is fine. Uh, the new look uh, from Google just gives you a little more I don't know, functionality and that sort of thing. However, uh, if, if you want to do a heat map with the data at the moment, the uh, that option only seems to be uh, available through the classic view. So, But I'm going to switch over to the new view because for today I just kind of want to do some basic stuff. Um, there's the cards option which basically gives you um, each uh, individual set and uh, then I've got this nice map view, which is basically just a point map. You can do some basic stuff with it. Um, remember, the nice thing about the New York City open data is it's already been geocoded for you, so it should load right in. Um, if you want to go ahead and uh, modify the map a bit, you can play around with the map styles. Uh, all right, so there's our map. Now, another really nice feature here, uh, if, if I just want to go a little bit beyond making a map, is I can also um, add some charts. Um, so I'm just going to demo a couple of those real quickly. Um, the first chart I'm going to work with here is just a simple pie chart. All right. So maybe uh, one of the questions that I want to try and answer is of the reported complaints um, for uh, problems at the streetlights, how do they really break down, right? And so if I look at all the records, um, you know, about 68.3% of them, or about 793 of my total records, are just reflected as a street light being out. Uh, some of these are a little more specific, missing glassware, photocell missing, street light cycling, um, you know, all sorts of things. Lampposts knocked down, which would make sense since this was obviously during the storm. Uh, I can also do something pretty cool. I can do a network graph, right? So maybe I want to look at the data um, by uh, let's say I want to look at it by day and borough, or maybe I want to look at it by the complaint and date or something like that, or the description of the complaint by date. What we're really looking at right now is um, these are the days that I had queried, right? And then these are actually the unique IDs of each one of the complaints. Um, they're not showing all the nodes. If I start increasing the number of nodes, you'll kind of see the, the complaints exploding out here. Um, but that's not really all that useful. So maybe instead of showing the unique key for these, let's try changing this to the description of the actual complaint. All right, so this is starting to be a little more useful. The, the, graphs are graphs are interesting. They're they're kind of cool, right? I mean, these are kind of fun to play with. Um, sometimes you'll find though that they're not always the most effective way to visualize the data. It just depends. Um, but they are kind of fun to play with. Uh, if uh, So let's see, I've got my descriptor here, I've got my date. Now one thing, there's a couple of cool things I can do here. I can show that the link is directional, right? So uh, depending on your data set, that may be important to show you. Um, I can also color uh, these attributes by the columns, which are, is helpful here because it lets me break out the days a little bit from the actual um, description of the complaint, right? So I can pick a particular day and kind of see um, based on the thickness of the line here, sort of what the number one um, type of complaints were, you know, for any given day, right? 
and street light out is obviously the dominant one still. You can tell just based on the size of the node here. Um, there's some cool stuff I can do uh, if I want to start filtering this data. So maybe I'm only interested, say, in the first date uh, that I had originally put in my query. I can do that here. So maybe I want to start with just uh, October 30th, for example. I enter it here. And I'll click Find. And now I should see, yeah, so now I've just got one node. And you can kind of get a better picture for, for that given day, how the different descriptions of the complaints kind of broke down. And again, the th line thickness here is, is indicating sort of the, the volume that fall within that category. So again, you can still see that Street Light Out was really the dominant one. Um, so that's it. I'm going to stop here. Uh, what I would do is encourage you to, to play around with this a lot. There's a lot of really great things you can do. Um, it probably is not a bad idea to uh, take your data into Excel, clean it up a little bit, make sure that you assign anything that you want to have a numeric value as a numeric data type uh, because of the way some of these other uh, visualizations won't quite work as well. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll do another one of these uh, hopefully uh, soon, which will kind of explore some of the other things that you can do with Google Fusion Tables.